Hey guys, this is Saptashi here and we are going to discuss, we are going to see how to use a pretend model like VGG for image classification. Okay, so let's take a quick recap of what is this VGG model. So, of course, uh, this is a CNN model, a ConNet model uh, because we are talking about image classification and it came into prominence because of the 2014 ImageNet challenge. And uh, this model was proposed by a couple of researchers from Visual Geometry Group, in short VGG from Oxford University, hence the name VGG. One of the striking features of VGG model was that it used a uniform uh, kernel size across the layers, okay, compared to AlexNet and all that. And it was quite small also, it was a 3 by 3 kernel. Why and what we have discussed in some of the lectures in our playlist, so I definitely advise that you uh, go back and take a look there. Okay, and uh, they actually experimented over uh, six alternative condemned architectures. Okay, out of that, actually two become very popular or better performing, which are known as VGG 16 and VGG 19. What is the significance of 16 and 19? They indicate number of trainable layers in the condemned. So it has 19 trainable layers, and VGG 16 has 16 trainable layers. So today we are going to look at VGG16 image work. Okay. Now let's look at this ImageNet dataset quickly. So why do we talk about ImageNet and why this is going on and giving birth to different popular CNN architectures? So earlier, before ImageNet, the test beds that were used has much less number of data samples. So in this diagram, x-axis you have number of data samples and y-axis you have number of classes. So if you compare with the existing test bed and ImageNet, you can understand that it is a completely different scale of problem. Okay, so if you can train a model which does well on image, it may definitely do well on all other type of image tasks. Okay, so that's the motivation why ImageNet challenges are done. Now, why pre-trained models? So what is the meaning of pre-train in traditional machine learning? You do a training based on the data that is available. When the model is trained and the validation is done, you use it for prediction. Okay. However, if you look at these con nets, okay, so these are you know very large networks, has a lot of parameters. So AlexNet, as an example, had 62 million parameters. Uh, your VGG16 has 138 million parameters. So training such a large network is time consuming, CPU consuming, and you need a lot of data for that. Okay. So the idea is that once it is already trained for such a complex, uh, complex task like ImageNet, can we not use it for other image classification tasks? And that's what we are going to use over here. And some cases, so it has thousand, uh, you know, thousand uh, category of images. If you if you have noticed in the earlier graph. Okay, so if we are using any of these known thousand categories, then we can directly use this pretend model, right? So this model, such a sophisticated model, is ready to deploy. You can just load the model, the weights are already there, and you can use it for training. In some cases, it may be that your number of classes are little different or the classes itself are little different. So then also you don't need to really throw away all the layers. So what you can do is you can freeze the weight of the bottom layers, change the top layers and do a training. Okay. And that doesn't need that amount of data if it was otherwise required. So such a technique is often also referred as transfer learning. Okay. So in transfer learning, if you look at this diagram, what happens is that maybe you are freezing these four layers. Okay. And you are unfreezing weight of this layer, okay, the top layer. And whatever data is available, you do the training. But the weights of the first layers or the initial layers do not change. All right. Now, how to import this VGG model? So you import it from Keras.applications, applications, okay. And uh, let's also you know print the model summary after it is done. Okay, so it will take a little bit of time because as I said that it is a quite a large uh, network and it has a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of layers, right, starting from your input layer. So it is a 224 into 224 input, okay, and uh, because of it is red, green, blue, there are three channels, right, and it is a four dimensional. So none means in, in case of none, the number of images that are going through will go there. Okay, then you have con layer and max pooling 
like what happens in a convnet architecture right so those are there okay so now what we are going to do is that we are going to load a sample image okay we are going to load a sample image so this is available uh, in a kaggle data source uh, itself okay and we are first going to import it so we are going to use a method like load image and we are already saying that target size is 224 224 because that's what ImageNet uh, accepts and we are saying color mode is RGB so it is three channel also already okay so let's do uh, let's run this quickly okay and let's look at the image oh so it's an image of a golden retriever right now let's do some more resizing so what we are going to do is so the image that we just loaded is in PIL format Python image library format so we want to need to convert it to the 3d numpy array so for that we have a very simple function called as image to array so that's what we are doing and if we now check the shape okay so you will see that the shape NP array is uh, 224, 2243, right? But then this was four dimensional, so we have to just expand the dimension. Okay, so let me just expand the dimension by one. Okay, and now if we check the shape, okay, you have a four dimension image. So this pre-processing is only what is required to actually use any image for classification by image. Okay, and uh, VGG is, is the not only the uh, model that is available. So ResNet is available, Inception, Exception, MobileNet, all these are available in this Keras applications. Okay, now uh, we do a quick pre-processing. So pre-processing is nothing but mean centering with respect to the image. Okay, and then we directly use the model for prediction. So no training required, no training data is available, nothing. We are just directly using an image and testing that whether it can uh, classify okay and you need to use something called as decode predictions so decode prediction is uh, required because you know that when in softmax you get a probability distribution as an output right so what are the different probability of different classes right so this decode prediction actually use takes this probability distribution and then uh, takes the top five uh, probabilities so what are the top five predictions and it also gives the logical name so we can understand what class it belongs from. So let's run this. Okay. And uh, this also takes a little time. Now let's look at P, which is our prediction. So this is this will give me top five probable classes. So golden retriever. So this was a golden retriever. Bingo. We have got it with 86% confidence. Okay. The next uh, is also a type of retriever. The third is not that good, but then it would went to retriever. So four of them are retriever and one is a tennis ball, maybe because, you know, uh, so much hairy uh, this type of dog is, right? So uh, I, I, I think I could explain, you know, why you will use a pretend model like VGG for your purpose and how, uh, you know, you can deploy it, you can use it for any type of images that you have got.